Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Here is a very quick update from my German office. Plus, I actually wanted to talk about a picture that was just released that has an interesting uh, covered up Tesla. So let's take a look. Anyway, so we can see here a report from Flensburg, Germany. And, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of stuff to go through here. If you're interested, by all means, I'll go through slowly here and pause and pause and pause and look at this. But the interesting part for me and for most of us is this final page here which is January of 2023 versus 2022. And it's the amount of vehicles sold. And let me just squeeze this in just a teeny bit here. So anyway, you can see here that we've got every, it's a pretty, actually a very extensive list here, but we've got every car company, I believe, that sells vehicles in Germany. And then you can see the amount. So there's 179,247 vehicles were sold in Germany in January. And uh, that's a negative 2.6% reduction in the amount of vehicles sold compared to, you know, year over year with last German with last year. But the interesting part, of course, is Tesla. If we go across here, well, actually it just says plus 912%. We can see 912% uh, over here as well. And the, the graph, of course, does not show, it has like an arrow to show how big it is, because if it was shown to scale, everybody else's, um, you know, percentage increases would be tiny little dots on either side. So they've, they basically just put some, some arrows here. Interestingly enough, Suzuki actually had a, um, a fairly large increase. They they seem to have had a lot of problems the last several years, but they actually had a large increase in uh, last year from compared to January. So that's cool. So anyway, uh, if you think the price cuts and things like that are not having an effect, 900% is a really big deal. So I just wanted to kind of go through here real quick and take a look at some other big names. You've got Audi. They are, it's really difficult to get these. I wish they'd put lines. I believe they're negative 1%. Yeah, negative 1%. It's much easier to look at that than the graph. And uh, let's see, BMW is minus 25%. Holy mackerel. You know, these are huge numbers. Cadillac, on the other hand, is up 207%. But of course, they sold 43 vehicles. So really kind of an inconsequential number. Uh, Citroën, Ferrari, Ferrari is up 61%. Nice. They actually sold a lot more than Cadillac in Germany. So there you go. Uh, Fiat's down negative 3.4%. Ford is actually up 3.4%. And it looks like they sold approximately double the amount. Let's see, 8,174. 8, Compared to yeah, about double of what uh, of what Tesla does. Of course, you know Ford is not selling electric vehicles, so we're actually this is the entire vehicle market here. If that wasn't obvious before, we're not just talking about Tesla versus other EVs. We're talking about Tesla versus every other manufacturer. So anyway, so this is really good to see Tesla selling about half as many EVs as Ford is selling in the country. Uh, Honda at only 503 vehicles. Jeez, Honda is having serious problems. Hyundai at 6,000 vehicles, so that's great. Kia at 3,000 vehicles, so. Between the two of them, 9,000 vehicles, because they're both kind of one conglomerate company. Land Rover, Lexus, Lotus, <clears throat> on and on and on. Uh, Mazda, 3,000. So they, they're up 31%. So that's actually good for Mazda. Uh, and you've got Mercedes is actually up 14%. So of all the, 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 you know, the groups around here, it looks like BMW is really the big loser thus far. It's good to see that Mercedes is holding their own, I guess. And of course, what we all really want to see down here is, you know, 49% extra Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce, Subaru, et cetera. Ooh, Subaru is down 26%. The big ones are Toyota and Vol and sorry, and VW, not Volvo. So you can, well, and actually Volvo too, why not? But you can see that Toyota actually was up 28%, which is great, but VW is basically flat, but they also are selling 37,000 uh, vehicles and change. So you've got, and of course, I believe if I'm not wrong, gosh, I can't remember all the brands that VW owns, but I believe Skoda is another VW brand. So, you know, if you start taking all of the VW brands together, it's going to be a very large number. But anyway, VW was flat. Uh, Toyota actually gained sales in January versus last year. So that's actually good. But all of these numbers are very, very, you know, puny compared to Tesla's. And again, it's unfortunate the graph doesn't show that because it would be nine times more. I think, well, no, actually 169% for MG up there. So there are some that grew approximately, you know, somewhere between 100 and 200%. Looks like the other one would be um, uh, Cadillac. Yeah. BYD, interestingly enough, they just started selling cars. So they sold 50 vehicles in Germany. So that is another interesting data point. Anyway, so, you know, Tesla would be somewhere around four and a half times bigger than the anybody else that's even out there. So this was a huge number and it's a huge number from a really good starting place. So it's great to see that Tesla is now selling 4,000 vehicles. If they improve 
you know, even a little bit past that. They don't have to get that much higher in order to get to, uh, you know, you've got Mercedes at 31,000, uh, Volkswagen at 37,000. So those are huge. <clears throat> but in order, let's see what BMW is, 11,000. So, you know, it could be within spitting distance of BMW in Germany within a few more quarters. So that would be pretty remarkable stuff. Okay. The other thing I wanted to touch on was this picture, which was shared by Connecting the Dots and this is a really, really fascinating picture. So I'm trying to make it bigger. There we go. Okay, so you can see the Cybertruck. You can't really tell what version of it is. It does not appear to have handles on it. So I believe it's not the uh, the original version. So this should probably be a pre-production beta version or something. You can't see the side mirrors. What's more interesting, of course, is this other vehicle that's over here that clearly has a Tesla branded cover over the top of it. And you just can't see all that much. But it, <laughs> number one, it definitely does not look like a sedan, which is really interesting because this does not look like a Model 3 in terms of the shape because the butt end of it is substantially higher than the butt end of a Model 3. But, and again, it's really hard to tell from this angle, but from this angle, it looks somewhat shorter than the Model Y. So... Could this be, you know, connecting the, the dots is model tau or, you know, the model two, whatever it is that we're going to call this thing. Could that actually be something like that? Or is this just a pre-production new version of the model Y? And it's kind of foreshortened because of the, the distance. It looks it looks a little bit different from the Model Y from to me. Honestly, the, uh, again, it could be the performance version, so it might have that little bump with the little um, spoiler that's on the back. But it it does not. It doesn't look like a Model Three because it's too high in the back end, <clears throat> and it doesn't look like a Model Y to me either because again, it looks a little too steep. That back end looks a little too steep. So. This could potentially be that model Tau, and we might be looking at something like this being unveiled. So maybe instead of Project Highland unveiling the new Model 3 on March 1st, one never knows. <laughs> it could be revealing this thing. Now, on the other hand, of course, they could have these pre-production cars. And again, this could be a Model Y, and it just it, it just because of the the graininess and poor quality of the picture, you can't really tell. But it, but as, you know, if this isn't that, they could be doing early versions of the vehicle, and so they're not going to be talking about it for a long time to come. But this does give us hope that maybe there are things coming up in the near future that could be very exciting for us. And again, I hope I somehow managed to snag a ticket to Investor Day because I would love to be there if they do actually um, unveil this vehicle. Actually, no matter what they say, I'd love to be there. Um, one other quick thing is that I did a video. I expected it not to do that well. It didn't do that well. But at the end of this video, I'm going to link the, the video I did this morning about AI ethics versus AI creativity. And I know because it didn't have Tesla in the subject line that it wasn't going to be as popular, but I really do think it's worth a view. I think it's worth considering right now. So if you have a moment after you finish this one, click on the link at the end of the video. It's got a picture of a robot looking at a sunset, actually painting a sunset in a sunset. So I thought that was kind of a creative idea. Anyway, so definitely go check that one out. I think that you will find it very valuable to think about. It's it's very current. It's stuff that we need to consider right now, how we're going to deal with ethics with biases, with restricting AI versus allowing it to flower and do what it needs to do. All of that stuff, really interesting questions that we have to confront because the, the state of the art of AI is advancing so quickly. So anyway, if you have time, definitely check that out. In the meantime, please do like and subscribe if you have a chance to do that as well. Thank you so much to my Patreon patrons, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.